Hey, good morning. Chuck here with Apple Drains. Today we're down in a crawl space that uh, someone has actually put in a sump pump and <clears throat> a sump pit. They used a trash can, which is fine, but they used an above ground pedestal pump, which works. You hear it kick on. That's all good. It discharges out all the way back uphill I'm sorry downhill to that corner and you can see they just threw their dirt all around right here but what happens here with this type of installation if you can see this water over here let me put some light on there for you you see all the water just laying in the trench So they really did a bad job, <laughs> to put it bluntly. Um, you can see all the dirt mounded up on the side here. That should have been graded out here on this side. Um, water just extends all the way through here. And what's happening is moisture is getting up into the house and they run the risk of termites here pretty bad. Let me show you something else. Let me hang this light back up here. To give you the example of just how bad the water is here and how bad of a job they did. You can see they've put perforated pipe, holes pointing up, which does absolutely nothing, and no gravel. But what's really interesting here is, you see this little mound right here? This is a crayfish. That's how wet this is. They've burrowed a hole down here. Crayfish, you know, uh, they're little crabs. and it's so, so wet all the way through here. So we're going to try to replace all of this pipe with gravel perforated. We're going to replace the sump pump over here. Continue this line down. Remove all this gravel and water and mud. Pull this plastic back all the way over to this corner over here. Where we're going to put another sump pump and send it out through the wall. So quite a bit of work here to do. So we're gonna start by pulling this stuff out of the way, getting it ready for us to dig. There's a, some crayfish, see them right there? See them swimming around? That's how wet this is. A little salamanders in here. It's really wet. Little guys squirming all around. We're going to have to remove all this gravel. There does appear to be a little piece of pipe here. So that's nice, but it really doesn't work. Pull all this back. So we've got lots of room to set our dirt and water along the side. Yeah, there's, there's a real mess in here and we've got to try to correct that. So outside here, we've got the guys bringing the gravel over from the trailer. We're using gravel by the bag. We bought that this morning at Lowe's. You can do the same thing. We bought 40 bags of gravel. That's a ton of gravel. We've got perforated pipe. We've got a couple sump pumps, sump liners, and it's all gonna go inside here after we remove all of this that someone else installed. You can see if you can find it on the other side. That's good. Find it on this side over here. You can here. see this system just did not work at all. Water just lays here. Absolutely worthless. Yeah. <laughs> They're 10 foot sections, huh? Just wait, Joe, just wait. <laughs> yeah. 
Whoa. That's a new slipper in there, right there. Is that it? Yeah, there's mud all in there. Okay. <clears throat> Let me get it now. No, 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 don't do anything yet. I doubt it. Go ahead and pull that, carefully pull that hose up. That's still connected, Paul. We need that pump to work, so. Correct. So will you go out and get a saw? Yeah. They're hanging in the back. Silver, silver one for that. Yeah, or it might be in the sump pit. Just bring a saw. Feels heavy. This one might have mud in it too. Oh, it has water in it. Okay, never mind. We don't need it. You don't need it. Pull, go ahead and pull this piece okay. out. Got it. Let him pull this piece out. No, no, no. Just, just leave it off. Let him pull it out. We'll reconnect it after you get it on top of this thing. Yeah. Don't take this out either. Here. Yeah, hand it back to Paul. This was their discharge line from the sump pump. And you can see all the water that's just laying down in this trench. So we're going to try to get this water to flow that direction back to the original sump pit and probably try to get it to flow over here to the side, this corner over here. So we've started trenching out the old system. We've got to get that water to move this direction towards this sump pit where we're going to put a new pump. And down to the other end, <coughs> excuse me, down to the other end, where we'll put another pump also. And it needs to get down about 10, 12 inches. Got a nice little flow of water coming through there, but it needs to be a little bit. You want me to take all this gravel out too? Nope. So you can see, digging out the old trench, the gravel makes it a little tougher to get out of there. It's wet, stops the shovel from going down in the ground. But it moves right along. We just need to be down below that footer. And then we'll put new gravel and new pipe in here. And this system should rework itself. We'll get this to drain away from here quite well. But as you can see, Paul's moving right along. He's just about got it deep enough to put the pit in there. In fact, if he cleans that square, I'll bet you he's got it. We fill up these buckets, we go dump it, put sitting back there, we'll test that in just Paul's a second. Paul's filling up these buckets as he's digging the pit, real mud. Then we take these buckets down and dump them over that hill where she's got another erosion problem. So Paul's got this pit down pretty deep. It's hard to get that dirt out of there with the shovel. Sometimes it's so heavy and wet. So we just reach in there with our gloves and we just scoop it out just like a backhoe. So here's our sump liner like set we might down just about in the crawl space we'll test at the other end. And now we're going to go back to the original sump pump and make a measurement so we know where to core through the wall to bring the discharge. And all I'm doing is counting the number of bricks down, and we're going to transfer that over to the outside. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and move over to the center, and we're ready to go ahead and start our core. We're using a, a Bosch hammer drill. It's a one and a half inch shank, and our bit is two inch diamond core. 
and that's the exact size of the outer diameter of the PVC. Remember, the PVC is inch and a half, and it makes a really nice fit. So if you're going to rent a core bit, a core bit and a hammer drill, make sure that you get a two inch bit for your inch and a half pipe. This only takes about three or four minutes, maybe five minutes altogether, and I'm letting it run just so you can see how quickly we get through here. This is at normal speed. Um, it only takes just a few minutes to core through the brick. Block is a little bit faster. Brick's a thicker material, but if you're coring through block, it works exactly the same way. And remember, it's easy to make that measurement. Um, you basically are counting the number of bricks and you want to go through the center of the brick. So here's our hole, nice clean hole, right through into the crawl space. Now we're inserting our inch and a half PVC. Now back in the crawl space, the first thing that we need to do is unhook and unplug the old pedestal pump, which still functioned, but it really isn't the best application you know, for that pump. We like to use submersible pumps. So we're going to take this old pump out and we'll probably just throw it away, but uh, we're going to get rid of this pump. You can see they had the wires all wrapped up around another wire just to kind of keep them out of the way. Not bad, could be better, but we're going to get rid of that pump completely. So let's go ahead and pull that pump out of there. Set it over to the side. Now we're ready to install the sump pump. I'm setting up the drill with a 5 16 inch bit so that I can put the riser onto the no hub and tighten that up. Remember that we set the sump pump up yesterday for this pit. We have another pump to install also, but we're setting this one up first. Set your riser into the no hub. Go ahead and get your drill and we're going to tighten up that stainless steel band as tight as it will go. Now we're ready to set our sump pump back down in the pit. We're going to center the pump and you can see it meets right up to the pipe. We're just going to put a 90 on there, glue it up, and that pump will be ready to go. We're using an Oatly medium bond cement works really well once you put the cement onto these fittings remember that pvc glue welds the fittings together so it's a very permanent bond and i like to work from the top down so i usually put the 90 on the outgoing piece first glue that up let that set for just a second and then we hook up the bottom piece to the riser, and that will be a very secure fitting for years to come. Always remember to make things as plumb or as straight as you can. Um, pump will still work even at a slight angle, but it's nice to get things really nice and straight. We say plumb, make things plumb, and it will definitely work for a lifetime. Zoller pumps are great pumps. In the 30 years I've been installing sump pumps, I have never replaced a Zoller pump, at least not any that I've installed. So we'll put the lid on here, and this pump is ready to go. Lastly, we'll give this pump some power just by plugging it in. Luckily, there is an outlet right above the pit here, which is good. Next, we're going to set up the second pump for our other pit at the other end of this crawl space. This is a big crawl space. Okay, so now we're ready to set up the second pump. Let's just review. You've got a male threaded inch and a half adapter that goes right into this spot right here, threaded. This is a female, inch and a half. This is cast iron to PVC. We just want to get this on here hand tight right now.
Next, we've cut a piece of PVC inch and a half, and we're going to send it just above the bar. We want to glue this down. We're using an Oatly all-purpose uh, medium set cement. Remember that once you put this in here, it welds together. It makes a permanent bond. It actually welds the pipe together. So we push and hold for just a second and that will weld these two pieces of PVC together. Then we can just tighten it up a little bit more. We're all set. Next we're going to put our check bow on. Remember that there's a little arrow that indicates the direction of flow. Water can only flow one direction through the check bow. So we're going to use a 5 16 inch drill bit to loosen this up a little bit. Check that flow direction. Remember this is a rubber no hub. You can see it squeezes. We call that a no hub. And the stainless steel bands hold that together. Now we're ready to tighten that up with our drill. Let's get it started here. We want to make it just as tight as we can make it. So that that won't come off. I've already tightened these. I'm going to double check them. And this pump's ready to install into the pit. Now we need to core the second discharge. And this is at the other end of the crawl space. Again, we're using a Bosch hammer drill with a two inch bit which is the exact size hole of the outer diameter of the inch and a half pipe. And I'm just going to go ahead and fast forward here so you can see it makes a real quick hole. I've showed this many times in our video. So we're bringing out the old gravel and mud from the previous person and it's heavy you got a big old heavy wheelbarrow right there to lift up over that lip to get it out the crawl space I'll need some gloves for it it's... let me let me come over here I'll just set the wheel there okay ready pull this shit ready one still got to get it up over top a little bit more a little bit more a little bit more there you go yeah, the, uh, so here we are at the second pit. We're just getting the measurements here. So we're going to bring our 90 up. Nice to use lettering to help find your measurement, make a mark, and then you're ready to cut it. Now we're going to go ahead and put our riser right in place. Tighten that clamp up. It's got a little slot that it fits in. Just as tight as that drill will take it. That's all set. Now we're ready to glue this up. Square it up so it's Centered. I like to work from the top down. Clean that off, clean that off. Good amount of glue. Both pieces. If you want it. Push and hold. That's set up. Now we're ready to glue it piece together. And it's going to come up and out through the wall.
push and hold. And that pump's ready to go. We just need to put our lid on there and then we'll install our footer tiles with the gravel that's going to lead into the pit. So you can see water's already coming down in that pit. Kind of hard to see it. But... See our pump down there? The water's already filling up slowly but surely. Most of the water ran out the other direction, which is fine. There's two sump pumps here. You can see water's moving around down there. It's still coming in. This pit is perforated, so water can easily come into the sides as well as through the footer tile. So we've got a basic gravel down underneath of our pipe, and you can see it coming into the pit. Kind of hard to see it there, but we've got four inch perforated pipe coming into the trash can pit and now we're going to cover this line with gravel and hook it up again down there by Paul into the second pit so all this water and mud that you see out here eventually is going to drain away and it dries this area out pump comes up goes through the wall outside we're making connections so now we're ready to cover with gravel so we're just using gravel by the bag and um, it's going to take a lot of bags. We've got 40 bags. We may have to go get a few more. But right now we're just covering up the, the trench, covering up the pipe. So the pipe will be encased in gravel. It'll be completely surrounded by gravel. Good. Pinch it together and slide it right into the hole. Perfect. Looking real good. Now we're ready to cover that with gravel and put our lid on here, plug our pump in. You see that water's getting kind of high down there, so it's working good. It's draining it away. So here's our lid just to kind of keep the pit from getting debris in it. And again, footer tile extends all the way back to the back back there. As you can see the second pump coming up. See the riser coming up. So here's the discharge of the sump pump. You can see it comes out through the wall. This line comes over and ties into the downspout drain. Right over here, we've made a T connection. And that picks up our pipe and hooks together. Okay, so here's our completed sump pump and footer, footer tile. You can see all the gravel coming back. You have to let your eyes adjust because it gets kind of dark. But you can see the gravel runs all the way back to the back back here. Oh, that looks good, Paul. Real good. <clears throat> Where it goes into another pit right over here that it was a trash can, but that's okay. It works really good. We put a new Zoller M53 inside that pit. Line comes up and goes out. Collects all the water. Should work really good. So now we're going to cover this up with the plastic, and we're done. Hey, this is Chuck with Apple Drains, reminding you that if you believe you can do something, I guarantee you can do it. Have a great day. crayfish mound and he's probably not in there but yeah he's not in there isn't that cool looking though that little critter crawled right in there just like a crab on the beach and he dug himself a hole and that's where his home was but we're moving that now